So in the previous lecture, what we saw that we can use a projection operator to actually project a part of a function, which could be a random function for with any given symmetry. So for example, we considered the case of C3V point group, right? So we used C3V point group and under that we saw that we projected a function with E representation with such that, so we took a function XZ plus YZ plus Z square and we use projection operator to project part of this function onto E so that that part which is basically XZ plus YZ forms a basis of E irreducible representation, right? This is what we saw. And in that case, we considered complete projection operator. So what was complete projection operator? Because we calculated the projection operator and we calculated for E representation. And then we took out individual matrix elements, right? So for example, one, one matrix element, two, two, and so on. So this was the projection operator which we applied. So in general, if we write the complete projection operator, the formula stands like this. So you have P, J, or I, any ith or jth irreducible representation. So you have a typical matrix element and that when operated onto a given function, let's say phi i, this gives you L i L j times L j over h times summation over all r. And then you have the corresponding matrix element under the uh, symmetry operation r. So the matrix element will be s prime t prime. And for jth representation, and if it is a complex con a number, then complex conjugate of that. And then the operator R applied onto. And this part is called as complete projection operator. This is the expression for projection operator. So now let us see how we can obtain the, the similar result by handling using incomplete op uh, projection operator. So let us see what is incomplete projection operator. So although it is incomplete, but it gives you the similar result or same result with slight human intervention. Okay. So now in this case, if you notice that we are dealing with all the individual matrix elements of all these uh, representations. So for example, if for jth representation under any particular symmetry element, we are always multiplying the corresponding matrix element with the effect of operation R onto a given function, right? So this thing requires the knowledge of full matrix for all symmetry operations. Whereas if we want to work with traces, if we want to work with trace of this matrix, we use incomplete projection operator. Now let's see how do we get from here from complete projection operator to incomplete. So because we want to work with traces so and traces deal with only diagonal elements. So we need to talk about only diagonal elements. So this one deals with all elements. So for diagonal elements, we can say for diagonal only elements, we can say that the index S prime is equal to T prime, right? So I can substitute, I can equate S prime to T prime and only worry about the diagonal elements. So in that case, the projection operator becomes PJ T prime T prime. And now I will only write about the write the expression of this and not the the function form okay not this five functions 
so l j h summation over all r and i have tau r so t prime t prime of jth representation and star and then i have r vector okay this is the operator now to obtain the trace here what we need is we need to uh, carry out a summation over all t right so now introduce so taking summation over all the values of t prime which is nothing but uh, different values of uh, these phi functions right because phi functions vary from different values of t or s right so if we do that we have summation over all t prime pj t prime t prime now this can be equated to we can write it as now there is no matrix element because now this is the complete trace of what we are going to get so in complete projection operator you will often see that there are indices written which indicates that it's a complete projection operator if there are no indices written that means it's a trace and we are dealing with incomplete projection okay so now if we go there so we have summation over t prime lj over h summation over all r tau r t prime t prime jth representation star operator r now this summation t prime can be taken inside because this is the only term which is dependent on t prime so hence we can take this summation inside and expand it so what we will get is li over h summation over all r summation over all t prime and what i get is tau r t prime t prime j star r cap now if i do this summation what do i get so this is nothing but a matrix element with these summation over all diagonals right this is this right so i can say that if i take summation over all t this becomes the trace of this matrix right so all i have now is li over h summation over all r so instead of tau r now we have chi r right this is the trace under this operation a uh, symmetry operator for jth representation and then you have r operator right and this is my expression for incomplete projection operator okay so this is incomplete projection operator so now that is easy so because now we don't have to worry about the all the matrix elements that we were uh, multiplying we saw in the last example let us take the same example and see if we get the same result using incomplete projection operator or not so let us now apply incomplete projection operator to the same function which was xz plus yz plus z square so even though we are taking incomplete projection operator but the summation over all r still stands over all r and we cannot uh, leave the class elements because effect of this symmetry operation different symmetry operators are different even though they belong to same class but their effect can still be different so let us see that we have c3v example e representation e 2c3 3 sigma v right 
even though we are writing the traces like this so it was 2 minus 1 0 i hope this is correct yes so now let us try to calculate uh, projection of projection of this function onto e representation which is represented like this projection of xz plus yz plus z square onto e representation so now this should give you li will be so this is i or j lj here is 2 order is 6 now effect of e so here we will be multiplying with the character which is chi r the character under e is 2 and then what we will be multiplying it with so let us write down effect of operator e onto x onto the function so let us do this completely because we did not do that calculation completely so let's just do this one complete calculation so we have minus 1 which is the character under c3 and effect of operation c3 onto xz plus yz plus z square again minus 1 which is now the character under c3 square so we have c3 square operator onto xz plus yz plus z square okay similarly we have sigma v1 so the character under sigma v1 is 0 right so 0 into sigma v1 operator onto the function plus again the character is see now look at the advantage here because when we were dealing with matrix element we had to do with all four matrix elements of this but here now the trace is zero so basically that does not contribute to the uh, calculation at all sigma v2 in the function plus zero into sigma v3 the function and the bracket this bracket is closed right so now these functions these symmetry operators are coming because you have r cap over here that means this r has to operate onto the function this chi is coming as here that there are characters coming over here right all these characters under the symmetry operation r and then you have li and h right okay so now let's try to solve this and see what do we get so we have p e xz plus yz plus z square and you have 2 by 6 2 into xz plus yz plus z square minus 1 minus of now effect of e onto this remains same now effect of c3 onto this this we had calculated in the last uh, lecture so i'm just going to note down what do we get here so effect of c3 will be minus half 1 minus root 3 xz minus half 1 plus root 3 yz plus z square okay and similarly we will get uh, negative sign and then effect of c3 square onto this so effect of c3 square is minus half 1 plus root 3 xz and we will have plus half root 3 minus 1 yz plus z square and then you have big bracket closed right so now if you solve this what do you get so if we solve this we will see that there are two xz over here and what other xz are coming so you have 
minus half minus half and then you have minus root 3 so plus root 3 minus root 3 and plus root 3 will be cancelled so you will have minus half coming from here and minus half coming from here so they will be adding up so you will have 2 exit from here and minus exit from here right so one exit will come okay so in the same way if you keep on doing this you are going to notice so let's not spend time on this calculation because now it's just a simple algebra so if we see that p e x z plus y z plus z square gives you x z plus y z which was what we obtained from if you remember that we obtained this from p e 1 1 and p e 2 2 right so we obtained this one and this one or vice versa so one of them gave you x z and one of them gave you y z let me see if uh, which one gave yeah 1 1 gave you x z and 2 2 gave you y z right so now if we want to normalize so this is not yet normalized so upon after normalization you have p e is equal to 1 over root 2 x z plus y z so now this is the normalized set of function which has symmetry which transforms as e representation of c3v point group right so all we have done is we have applied incomplete projection operator only once and that has simplified the calculation a lot as compared to what we were doing when we were doing complete projection operator right so now that we are well versed with how projection operator calculation works so we'll see how to calculate how to calculate SALCs from a given set of atomic orbitals right so remember we discussed that there are a set of atomic orbitals which upon linear combination gives you a set of functions which will form basis for irreducible representation if we combine them in a appropriate manner so that process can be done by projection operator why do we need to do that process because such combined atomic orbitals will form the acceptable solutions for the Hamiltonian equation or the Hamiltonian operator, right? Or the energy equation. So let's see how to do this, uh, this thing. So by taking an example, so let's take a different example than C3V now. Let's take uh, water. That also is easy and we have been working on that. So now in this case, let us take basis set function as one s a and one s b which is nothing but s orbitals of hydrogen okay so we are taking s orbitals of let's say this is a this is b and now we are taking s orbitals of this hydrogen which are oriented something like this because these are spherical in nature these are now taken as basis set and now we will try to combine them in a appropriate linear combination and see that if we can obtain using projection operator if we can obtain linear combinations which are symmetry adapted what do i mean by symmetry adapted that they are basis of a certain irreducible representation of c2v point group which is the water point group right so what we are going to do is aim is we will construct suitable so this is a very simple example we'll see we'll take more complex examples later this is a very simple one to see linear combinations of 
1s orbitals of hydrogen such that resulting combination transforms according to some IR. So we don't care about which IR but some IR of the symmetry point group C2B. of water okay so now first what we have to do is with 1s a 1s b we have to create a reducible representation under C2V. How do we do that? That is very simple and we have seen that. So if we apply E onto 1SA, 1SB, what do we get? We get the same matrix back. This implies that E can be written as 2 cross 2 matrix of uh, 2 cross 2 unit matrix, right? Similarly, we can say that C2Z can be written as, we have done that earlier, so I'm not going to write uh, do this for all the operations, 0, 1, 1, 0, because 1SA and 1SB are now replaced with each other. Sigma, let's call it as YZ, and that will be 1, 0, 0, 1 and sigma xz the matrix come out to be 0 1 1 0 all right so once we have obtained the reducible representation using the basis set of functions we have to reduce this to component irs right so this means what we can say is c2v let us write the E character table C2Z sigma YZ sigma XZ and this is our tau 1SA 1SB and the traces are now this is 2 this is 0 2 0 okay so now we can say that tau 1SA 1sb can be reduced into a1 times a1 plus a2 times a2 plus a3 times b1 plus a4 times b2 what are these a1 a2 b1 b2 these are the Mulkan symbols for the irreducible representations of c2v point group so I'm not going to write the character table of C2V point group, but we can see that these are the four irreducible representations C2V has. So this particular tau, which is the reducible representation, would be a linear combination of these irreducible representations where A1, A2, A3, A4 can be determined using AI can be determined using reduction formula so go back and see what is reduction formula this was 1 over h and uh, okay let, let's just write it down so you have ai 1 over h and summation over all r chi a b of r and chi i of r 
this is the trace of uh, reducible representation this is the trace of irreducible representation you multiply the two and then take summation over all r divide by the order of the group and you will get ai right so if we do this for this particular tau what we get one is b what we get is a1 plus b1 so we see that uh, this small a1 is equal to 1 and this a3 is equal to 1 a2 and a4 goes to 0 so that's why there is no contribution of a2 and b2 towards this one right so what we get here is only a1 plus b1 now let us see what happens if we apply projection operator and we will use only incomplete projection operator because we have the traces only i mean we do have matrices but we are not going to do the complete because it takes more time and gives you the same thing applying incomplete projection operator so let's see how do we do that so we have uh, what we can do is we can either apply projection onto a1 or onto b1 because both of them contribute to this right so basically what we will get is we will get one linear combination corresponding to a1 another corresponding to b1 now this can be applied on to either 1s a or it can also be applied to 1s b okay so we are going to apply 1s a on to a1 what do we get so l is 1 h is 4 and the corresponding matrix element for a1 for all of them will be one now e operator on to one s a plus one into this is the trace trace c two z operator on to one s a plus sigma y z operator on to one s a this is of course one into plus one into sigma x z operator on to 1s a right now this gives me 1 by 4 1s a c2z will replace this thing so we'll get 1s b sigma yz will also replace so we'll see what happened here sigma yz now sigma yz will remain same so we'll get 1s a sigma x z will replace so we'll get 1s b right now this can be written as 1 by 2 1s a plus 1s b right? and upon normalization we can say that this can be 1 by root 2 1s a plus 1s b this is after normalization right? so these are now normalized now this linear combination of 1s a and 1s b transforms as a1 representation of c2b point group right that means they will form basis for a1 representation so now we know the symmetry of this that this is uh, what is the symmetry of this under c2b point group right now let's do the same thing for b1 representation so p b1 will on 1sa so you can choose either of this either one of the function is fine it does not matter which function you choose you will get the same result so again 1 over 4 you should know what are the traces for b1 b1 representation so we will write that so under e it will be 1 and then you have e if on 1s a then for uh, c2 it will be minus 1 character and c2z on 1s a then you have sigma yz so character under sigma yz is again minus 1 so in one of ca cases it will be yz in one of the cases it will be plus 1 okay so 
idea is that you will get a linear combination. We'll see what linear combination. So we'll have uh, yz, this will be xz, right? Yeah. So sigma xz minus a plus 1 sigma yz one is a now this if you do it you will see that what you are going to get is one is a minus one is b so you can see the effect of this and do this and this upon normalization will get one over root two one is a minus one is b right so these are the two linear combinations which you will get using projection operator and now you will know the symmetry of these linear combinations so if you randomly combine any two atomic orbitals you will not know what is the symmetry of this uh, how will they transform under c2v point group but here you know the symmetry so that's why projection operator technique is very very useful so now as a proof if you let's say if you do projection on to the irreducible components which are not present in this reducible part so let's say if you do it for a2 onto 1sa or projection of 1sa onto b2 now a, a2 and b2 are not forming not contributing to this tau this uh, reducible which we obtained using the atomic orbitals as the basis set right so if you do that you will see that the answer which you will get here is actually zero right so that means any combination of sa and sb will not transform as a2 and b2 right so you cannot combine this in any forms so that it will transform as a2 and b2 because a2 and b2 do not contribute to this reducible representation okay so in next class we will see we'll take up more examples of uh, obtaining SALCs so that we are through with this thorough with this calculation and uh, we know in our heads and that how to uh, carry out this before we actually go towards chemical bonding okay i think that's all for this class thank you very much